what is going on youtube and welcome back to another edition of top down market analysis with me t hobbs uh man what a week what a week what a week we had fomc last week we had a lot of things going on last week and uh well the market didn't disappoint i mean for the most part it played right into our favor on both instruments actually i i believe our prediction for uh for NQ was about 40 points off. We predicted about a bounce around like 17, 9, 60. And if we couldn't hold that bounce, then we come down a little lower. We ended up getting down to like 18,002 for the end of the week. And then on ES, we predicted a bounce at around 51.95. Uh, we ended up bouncing at 51.95.75 on the dot. So uh, again, I think this is nine weeks straight, nine weeks straight. Um, so I hope you guys are enjoying the content. But First and foremost, please make sure you tip the barbers, AKA hit the like and subscribe button, turn the notification bells on so you get notified every time we put out a video and or go live. We are on our way to a thousand subs and we couldn't do it without the support of you guys. So without further ado, let's jump right into the top down analysis of NQ and ES. So as we always start per usual, we have this cup and handle that is probably the most historic cup and handle of all time because this handle provided a nasty rally right this is the monthly chart and we have not stopped we have not printed a red candle since october when this cup and handle finished right once all of this selling stopped and this bullish engulfing candle began we have not put in a red candle yet and there's four days left in march and i just don't see i don't see this candle there's no reason to believe this candle is going to finish red um with four days left next week and next week is kind of a shortened trading week. So if anything, bulls are going to be trying to take this up maybe a little bit more. And uh, you can clearly see just by the candle formation on the monthly that the sellers had their chance down here at the low and they, they failed to go anywhere within less than 50 percent of the previous month. Therefore, this is so far a very bullish month that we're experiencing. So let's jump down to the weekly. As we go into the weekly, this was very interesting last week. Remember, last week we had uh, we had March 4th and March 11th ending kind of bearish, right? Like in the grand scheme of things, I said that this was nothing to write home about. If you're a swing trade swing trader, I would not be selling my position as of yet. I would be waiting for these structures to break some some type of closure belief here and then a failed retest before I got out of the trade. Therefore, I was looking at this as just like a simple pullback. I understood and we talked about the retest of the prior uh, week failing to find more buyers and then us coming back down, down here to find more buyers. And you can see that's exactly what happened. We found more buyers here, not to mention this is eerily similar. This candle formation is eerily similar to what happened in 2023, right? Right around October, we had these two uh, bearish candles followed by this bullish engulfing and then we rally for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks straight. And <laughs> if that's any indication of what this rally could bring, then um, eight weeks would put us around, let's see, right around May, which is about the time, usually around July, May, May, June and July is when the market starts to calm down. You can kind of see that same pattern, pattern over here around July, we hit the peak. And then we started trading down until about October. We'll get into, you know, my predictions for the rest of the year here in a little bit. So, uh, again, that's basically it in regards to the weekly. So we held this support down to about 18,002, like I said. And we were talking about 17,960 being a level of interest, right? So let's drop down to the daily so we can get a little bit closer to information that's relevant to the trading day next week. So... As we analyze the daily candles, like I told you guys uh, two weeks ago, right? We were in consolidation right here after breaking a high, right? Anytime we break a high, we go into consolidation. In that consolidation, what do we expect? We expect a sweep of the high of the consolidation and then a sweep of the low of the consolidation. If I move this line up here, this was the consolidation. We got a sweep of the high right there, wicked above it. And then we got a sweep of the low, which put us almost right where I thought we would go which was 17,969.71, the top of this daily candle structure here. We couldn't quite reach it because bears were just that aggressive. I mean, bulls were just that aggressive, right? Also, its counterpart, ES, actually got the tap. 
so once ES started to rally, there wasn't much stopping in Q from continuing that rally as well. And like I've told you guys, when ES, since we've been up here, ES has been the stronger instrument. So it's basically moving this rally much faster than NQ is itself. So if we analyze um, Thursday price action and Friday's price action, you can see Thursday price action finished a little bearish, but again, nothing to write home about because even though this, this candle is bearish in regards to candle structure, inside of this uptrend, it doesn't really mean anything because it wasn't able to not, it wasn't able to even finish 50% in the previous daily candle. And then the next day, we couldn't get down to 50% of the previous daily candle. Therefore, this candle, although it looks bearish, it's actually really bullish inside of this uptrend. Therefore, I'm expecting price to continue up depending on, and, and I'll show you kind of where we are on the four hour. The fact that we have lackluster news this week, I still expect bulls to try to push and get above the all time high, right? Uh, and start setting new all time highs, right? As far as pullbacks, I'll get into that when we get down to the four hour uh, time frame. That being said, we're coming out of this consolidation. If we come out of this consolidation after sweeping the highs and sweeping the lows, what do you expect? You expect us to start putting in new highs. And you can see we just barely wicked above the previous high at 681 and we tapped that 700 level for the first time on Thursday. That is a good sign if you're a bull. The fact that we tapped it, we came back down, obviously it's gonna make you cause the pause. But in the grand scheme of things, we rallied all week we rallied 700 points and we really only gave back like 200 points right that means that the bulls are in full control of the monthly the weekly and the daily right it's hard to find any weekly or month you can't find any monthly candles that are red right you don't really see any closure of weekly candles that are red except for two right and now here we are on the daily and basically every day is bullish Therefore, when you see me trade, if you guys come to the live stream, when you see me trade, you'll see me frustratedly thinking about why I would even think about shorting markets because the market is so bullish, right? Like this is an uptrending market, a very bullish market. So if you're going to be a bear in this market, you need to tread lightly. That's all I'm going to tell you, right? So let's drop down to the four hour and let's try to get some levels out of this four hour, right? So the levels that I would be keying in on, right, where we are right now is this four hour or this two hour, I think there's a two hour demand zone about right here at 18.335. Um, now this area is important because it caused this major imbalance right here, right? This imbalance was due to FOMC. We consolidated, consolidated, consolidated. And then Jerome Powell came out and said he wasn't gonna raise interest rate. As a matter of fact, he sees us cutting interest rates very soon. Well, but like I said in my last video, Barring anything, unless Jerome Powell came out on Friday, I mean, on Wednesday and said, hey, we're raising interest rates. There was no reason to believe that this market was going to go bearish off of FM, FOMC. So we played it that way. We played it bullish. And 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 yeah, we made a little little a little bit of money. So if we look at the fib, right, if we take a fib from the low to that high where we are right now, you can see we're right in the bounce zone. Right. When I say the bounce zone, I mean that the market loves 50 percent. Right. The market loves to bounce at 50 percent. 18472 sits us about 50 percent. And I'm not even sure if we can get down that low, because when I show you ES's chart, you're going to see that ES is forming a really nice wedge. I mean, you can kind of see that same effect on on NQ where we're starting to form that falling wedge, a.k.a. a uh, very bullish falling wedge pattern. But we're also looking like we're, we could be putting in a cup right? And then a handle, right? And then go higher. So it wouldn't surprise me what one bit, right? What did we get last week? We got a break of multiple structures, one structure, two structures, three structures, four, right? What happens when we break structure? We consolidate, right? And we're in a perfect week to go into consolidation. This week, the only big news, I believe, is um, PCE this week, right? So fundamentally, it's a perfect time for the market to consolidate inside of a nice range and start to accumulate more buyers and sellers before we make that next move up. Again, taking into consideration that this week is a, a, a shortened week, 
we got good friday so we're in a really nice range on the lower time frames and i'll go over the lower time frames with the discord members i only go as far as the four hour on these top-down analysis so if you want to join the discord the link is in the description down below but let's continue about nq and what nq is potentially doing like i said the only levels that i'm looking for is basically 472 on the fib or basically basically a bounce right where we are right now or 472 and if we can't hold 472 then i'm looking for price to trade down to 14 18 382 right which is the test of this previous high and then if we can't hold that i'm looking for a bounce at 18 340 through roughly about 18 248. i don't see us coming down that far but at the same time the market doesn't deal off what i think right it deals off what it wants to do and then as far as the prediction in regards to how high we can go i mean it's a shortened week but usually we've been averaging roughly about anywhere from 2.6 to 3.2 percent on the weekly right so we drop back if we go back to the weekly time frame right and we say okay um where can we potentially go right like this is people people want to know this information right we just go up about another 2.3 percent you can see us hitting about 19,000. you know if we go up three percent we're at 19,001. if this rally continues at the way that it's going and i've made it very very clear that this rally can very much continue but i'll show you guys again in this video exactly why i think this rally can continue because i'm just going to compare it to what always what's happened in the past history always repeats itself if we go back and we look right here remember this pattern all right i'm gonna take this off here <clears throat> this pattern right here these two uh bearish candles fallen crows or black crows or whatever you want to call it doesn't matter these two bearish candles on a weekly look eerily similar to this right this was october going into november right and then we rallied right and then january came right matter of fact i'll go back even further here how about this right here all right october november december january here we go right here this is january 2023 now we were over here in january right and then we rallied up in february this was march we had this pullback in march and then we got this nasty rally right here let me just show you how much of a rally that was in the month of march right because some people will say well, you're tripping. No way we can go higher. All right. So from this point in October, right? And just bear with me, right? So from this point here, this was the low. At that point in Oct in March, in March, right? We were up about 13%. Let me show you how eerily similar this is, right? So this is January, right? In March, guess what? We're up about 12.28%. From March, right? This is just tinfoil hat stuff. But again, it's, it's relevant, right? From March... From that March time frame, all the way into you guessed it, June and July. What did we do? We rallied thirty-two percent from that number, right? So just again, history repeats itself. The market has no reason to sell off. Nvidia is doing its thing, right? From here up another thirty-two percent would put us at about twenty-four thousand. So for those of you out there, because I see it a lot, I see it all over Twitter. Or Twitter, I see it on my social media i see it everywhere everybody's trying to call the top of this market let the market be the market right don't try to get in the way of price action you don't have enough money to move this market right you just don't you don't have enough money you don't you, you your funded account has no bearing on this market your live account has no bearing on this market if you're if you're watching this video i seriously doubt if you have enough money to move this market so your best bet is to understand the structure, right? Understand the market structure and then follow the structure. All right, so that's all I got for NQ. Let's move on to ES, right? So we look on ES and again, like I said, you can see that even the monthly candle is showing you that it's much higher up structurally than its counterpart of ES, I mean of NQ. We had those three falling black crows and then we've been balling ever since, right? Let's drop down to the weekly and you can see again, less red candles, and less stronger, like the, the the strength of the red candles are even weaker, right? These were full body candles on NQ. They're doji candles on, on ES, which means that buyers are 100% in control. And you can see ES didn't just peak its head above its all time high. It got above the all time high by about 30 points, almost 40 points, right? So that's telling you how much stronger NQ or ES is than NQ. It's not a 
knock on people who trade in Q. I'm just letting you know that if ES is showing us the future, you best believe NQ is going to be following that same that same fate, right? Like it's 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 inevitable, right? Therefore, what am I thinking for ES? I'm thinking the exact same thing. ES is pushing up. It's not going to just randomly fall out of the sky, guys. It's not how the market works. The 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 bulls are in control this week. We have a shortened week next week. Four days left in the week. They may consolidate for a little bit, or they'll come out Monday and just start rallying this thing straight up, right? Again, looking back on history, right? Look where we came from back in January, March. Wait, this is January. Here we go. Right here. All we got to do is take the same thing, right? Look in here. That's March. We were up 9% right? from October or from January to March. Guess what? We're up 10%. From January to March, does it not look eerily similar? I haven't even done these measurements. I'm just basing it off of what I know that the market does, right? March into, you guessed it, July, August, guess what? Right before the sell-off, we rallied another 12%. If ES was to rally another 12% from here, let's just see. Puts us at almost 6,000. And guess what you're seeing on all of YouTube, right? Everywhere I look on YouTube, Fed, Fed predicting 6,000 S&P 500, Fed doing this and that and the other. It's not a prediction. It's a repeat. The market's on replay, guys. The sooner you realize that, the better off you'll be, in my opinion. The sooner you realize that the market is not random, right? It's built on structure and it only goes one direction. No matter how much we go bearish, the market will go back up because we are the most dominant market in the world, right? So everybody depends on us. So, all right, let's move on. Let me get, not get too political. Let me go into the daily chart, right? As we walk into the daily chart, what can we expect? We had that consolidation, sweep of the high, sweep of the low, and now we're breaking out extremely bullish. So what do we expect once we break out extremely bullish like this? Well, we expect a retest of the, the low that brought us here, right? So if we get a re because we're so bullish, we might not get back down to the low. The low's down here. So I usually like to look for a retest of the high that brought us here, right? At 52, 54, 75, maybe we get a retest there. Um, that's only about 30 points away, so we can get we can get there, right? That's not asking too much, right? And if we take our FIB and we just go to the previous high and the previous low, the other thing that we could tap into is 52.11, right? I'm more sore leaning because the market's so bullish. I'm leaning sore looking for that tap of 52, 54, 75 before we continue that rally higher, right? If we go down a little closer to price, I'm not going to use this candle because this wasn't a full body candle. I'd much rather use this candle as a potential area where price could bounce. 50% of the previous day's candle, right? Wednesday's close, which was, guess, it, guess what? FOMC, right? Wednesday's candle is important and will forever be important because we rallied so much. It would make sense for us to push back down into 50% of this candle, which is about 52.65. So between 52.65, 52.11, more closely the price, 52.65 through roughly about 52.54 is where I would be looking for ES to catch a bounce. Now, if we get some negative news or anything like that, then obviously this will change. But this isn't this isn't what you should be trading off of. You shouldn't you shouldn't come to the top down analysis in the trader shop looking for what you should be trading off of. You should understand exactly what you're trading off of. You should come here purely for entertainment purposes just to see if I'm going to be right. So the minute that I'm not right, you guys can just be like, this dude sucks nine weeks straight and he couldn't even get to week 10, right? <laughs> the other levels that I would be looking for is right on this four hour as we come down, which would be that same area that I told you about on NQ, which is 5247 through roughly about 5233. Basically, I'm not, I'm not expecting the market to give this up. Right. They're not going to give up this entire candle. Right. I, mean, I shouldn't say not. I'm saying I don't expect this entire candle to get eaten up. What I expect is a very nice falling wedge. Right. Coming back into price and or consolidation. Right. Where we're holding this bull flag pattern really nicely. We consolidate and then we dip down. We sweep the high of the consolidation. We sweep the low of the consolidation and then we push right back up. Right. To put in new all time highs. Basically the same thing we did. Uh, when we came up here the first time, right? We put this bull flag in, we swept the high, we swept the low, and then we rallied, right? Same thing here. Sweep the high, sweep the low, and then we rallied, right? So nothing out of the ordinary. I hope you guys enjoy these series because I'm going to continue to bring them to you as much as possible. 
I really appreciate all of you guys that continue to show me and Justin some love. Continue to stop by the live stream if you haven't uh, checked it out before. And don't forget to tip the barbers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for your time. T. Hobbs, out.